Hello there. We have dissociative identity disorder. Wait. Why does he say we when there's clearly no one else there? In the case of people with DID, they exist as a we, an us, because the brain and body houses many selves. If you think that's not possible, you probably don't know very much about DID, but you've come to the perfect place to learn. By the way, it is fascinating. I love learning about it, but for obvious reasons. So, how can DID be diagnosed? According to the DSM-5, DID can be diagnosed when two or more distinct identities or personality states are present, each with its own relatively enduring pattern of perceiving, relating to, and thinking about the environment and self. So, what does that mean? First, it says there must be two or more distinct personalities or identity states. This means, simply put, that we are a we. There is more than one of us. Then it states that there must be an enduring pattern of perceiving, relating to, and thinking about the environment and self. What does this mean? Simply put, each member of the system is real, by which I mean they have an enduring person and all that it comes with. They, have, they are separate agents. You have probably heard of DID, as it was called in the past, Multiple Personality Disorder. You are probably familiar with MPD in film and fiction. You have Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Fight Club, and most recently, M. Night Shyamalan's Split and Jane from Doom Patrol. So what is the problem with DID in film and fiction? It is very rarely accurate and almost always promotes stigma. We are not violent. We are not crazy. So why did I call this YouTube channel Dr. Jekyll and the System? if Dr. Jekyll promotes stigma. I'm doing it somewhat out of tongue and cheek. I really don't think that's very harmful. It's a classic, an enduring piece of literature, but it is not a realistic presentation of DID, and I recognize that, and I hope no one gets the wrong idea. It probably was written without even a knowledge of what DID is. So who is Dr. Jekyll? Thomas, the host. I was the host because I was not made aware of the system until I was 25. What do I mean by this? I thought I was the only one, so acted like I was the only one. And because I acted like I was in charge, I was in charge. These days though, I don't know, there could be a coup. Exciting. So. Uh, So I keep saying system. What does that mean? It basically just means all the alters and how they communicate with each other and how we act as a unit. So that's why we say we. So let's say I, Thomas, or Dr. Jekyll, if you like, he's speaking right now. He's writing this. Well, that isn't ever entirely accurate. Whenever Thomas writes, he is influenced by the entire system. He does not write alone like he thought in the past. Thomas writes, everyone writes, we write. So, how in the world do you get DID? I don't plan to go too far into it in an introductory video, but I'll touch on it. It is widely viewed that the altars are formed as a result of childhood trauma. To go a little bit more in depth, as a child, we have multiple ego states. If the child develops normally, the ego comes together as one. But if there is trauma, the ego states can develop separately as selves. These new alters have just as much claim to the mind and to choices as the host Thomas has. Something I think is important to say as Thomas, I want to say this. I do not think any alter is less conscious, less of a free agent than me. And I will never let that go. 
But Thomas, how was it possible to host many people in a single brain when everyone else just has one self? Does, what if everybody has DID and they just don't realize it? I've considered that. But I've come up with a metaphor that might be right. I'm not sure. Let's visit it. Let's call it the clown car metaphor. So there's the brain. Right. Let's say most of the brain is the car. It does a lot. But what it lacks is an identity, a self, a chooser, an agent, a driver. In the case of the clown car, there are many different drivers that can take the wheel over time. Thus, many selves, one brain. Many clowns, one car. <sighs> so, Thomas, we're interested. What are the alters like? Well, let's begin with some DID vocab. There are perpetrators and protectors, which in simplest terms means bad guys and the good guys. Perpetrators, bad guys, protectors, good guys. Some protectors predict littles, which are alters that are kids. They're young. There's a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. <sighs> yes, it's weird. A few alters are younger than me. I don't know why that happens, but it is frequent with people with DID. Troyan is five years old, and Carson, 15 years old, protects her and cares for her. He even protects Thomas from her, which I think is a good choice because I'm not the best alter. I have the habit, Thomas... I have the habit of saying the worst things first. It kind of is my sense of humor. It's kind of trying to be the most honest, but honestly, it can just be, turn out to me, I'm just being a dick. But I'm working on that. Troyan, because she's five years old, is naturally extremely cute. I started to play with toys with her, which is great, because I started collecting figurines not long ago. That's the nerd in me. But now I have a whole nother reason to collect nerdy action figures. Clark is Sebastian's protector. He is nine. So he's really changed me, Thomas, because I really want to be a good role model for him. He looks up to me. And this has made me realize I'm kind of not a good person. Sebastian is funny and kind, and he has the best protector. I have four protectors. Philip, Clark, Catherine, and Samson. Let's talk perpetrators. The bad guys. So from what I can tell from the people with DID and those on YouTube is that the bad guys are not really viewed as bad guys. They're misguided. They're misunderstood. They have a reason for being difficult. They're trying to do the right thing, but honestly, it can come out as abuse. It can be very abusive. We have two perpetrators, not too bad, Samuel and Stefan. Fortunately, they have calmed down recently. However, they will really attack me. There are a few things that trigger me, and the, alters, the perpetrators know this and use it against me. In the past, I was extremely depressed. The perpetrators would cycle me through negative thoughts and ideas to make things worse. It was kind of like being on an endless existential trial. Once I had defeated one bad idea, they come up with another. And after that, they come up with another. And it felt like I would never get free. So, should I forgive the perpetrators? I have some advice here. You may take it or leave it. You don't need to forgive. I say this for any person who has been abused by somebody they have to keep working with. You can be kind. You can get along. You can even build something together. All without forgiveness. Another DID phrase, the inner world. Thomas again. I am not very welcome in the inner world. I think it has something to do with me being the host. But I've seen a lot of it so far. There's a um, there's actually an altar who doesn't come out at all. He his sole purpose is just to manage the uh, the inner world. He's not too interested in the outer world. So the altars meet in a beautiful hall with a very long table and where they discuss the matters of the day. 
it is kind of like Harry Potter whenever there's a great hall. Just one of those houses, one of those long tables. I've also been introduced to my bedroom if I want to use it. It is very much like the bedroom from Ex Machina. You may not know what that is, and that's fine. But it's like in a bunker. There's no windows, and but it's like still very beautiful, very modern. Uh, something interesting that I'll try to explain, but it's hard. I can't wait to see what they look like. What does that mean? What it means is the way they identify their appearance is not the same as mine, where I identify with what I see in the mirror. They do not always identify with that, only partly. So I can't wait until they show me themselves. They can do that through showing me an image of the mind. Another technique I thought I was going to use is I would, I would be like a police sketcher and have them describe themselves, and I would draw accordingly. I am an alright artist. I'm a little simplistic, but um, I'm hoping it'll be good enough to help me see what they look like. Uh, interesting point. So, let's imagine Thomas, he sees the, himself in the mirror. He will focus on different things than another alter will. In other words, we look at different things in our faces, so we appear differently from each person. For instance, if you to emphasize this point, if you were a girl, you would see and had a girl a gender, you would see something different than if you were a male gender looking at the same face. Okay, I think we've said enough for an introductory video. We hope we have been interesting and informative. Subscribe.